I met him in March of this past year and it was on a, a trip down to Haiti with Partners in Health and Operation Smile. So two NGOs that do slightly different things but uh, came together for this uh, trip down in Haiti and it was primarily devoted to cleft lip and palate and uh, you know as is uh, as occurs with trips like this you end up showing up and there are hundreds of children lined up. Uh, a lot of them don't fit exactly the type of mission that that is so that was cleft lip and palate but we had hand anomalies and burns and all sorts of things and and um, midway you know back down the line I, I could see uh, you know th this poor little fella here and uh, uh, obviously that was not something that could be managed uh, on a cleft trip and I knew that there were potentially other intracranial uh, issues that had to be dealt with so uh, we thought it was best to try to get him up here to have a CT scan and have an evaluation with our neurosurgical team and with our team. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it took several months, but with the help of Partners in Health, actually they helped with the, uh, uh, you know, visa issue and transportation and all that, and uh, they managed to get him up here. We were in an area in the central plateau of Haiti called Hench, which uh, might only be, you know, a hundred miles from Port-au-Prince, but it actually takes about six hours by car to get up there because the roads are just unbelievable, uh, unbelievably terrible. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a very you know, difficult and arduous journey just to get there. It's in an area called the Central Plateau of Haiti. Uh, very, very poor, uh, uh, basically an, an agrarian subsistence uh, society there. Uh, the infrastructure for health care is also uh, almost non-existent. There is a hospital there uh, that is a partnership hospital with the Ministry of Health and Partners in Health and that really uh, provides 100% you know, of, of any health care that goes on in, in that area uh, and Partners in Health has been working with the Ministry of Health there to, to really uh, improve the facilities there and improve the training. Uh, so we used that facility for that week um, and uh, you know I would say you asked what type of facility that is it's it's very rudimentary the operating rooms in, in this hospital in Hench have uh, you know uh, a, a, a table and um, uh, an anesthetic machine that might be uh, you know 30 40 50 years old but in terms of sutures and other uh, other material really there's not much there so we ended up bringing everything with us and um, you know, essentially just transformed that operating room into a fairly modern operating room. The only unfortunate thing is that when that group leaves, it brings everything with it, and, uh, and so it reverts back to, uh, you know, something that uh, you might have seen 50, 60, 70 years ago in a, in a more developed country. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a very difficult situation, both the physical infrastructure but also the human infrastructure there, you know, they're just, they don't have the trained personnel that we would have uh, in a country like this, from nursing to surgeons to internal medicine, you know, across the entire spectrum of healthcare, they're, they're lacking in all of those areas. Well, I could tell just from looking at him, even when we were in Haiti, that he had something called a frontal encephalocele, uh, which is actually quite rare. And you know, I had worked in Australia for five years, and for reasons that no one really knows, uh, uh, Southeast Asia has a fairly high prevalence of encephalocele. And so, uh, when I was working in Australia, I actually saw these—I wouldn't say frequently, but uh, in, the, in the five years I was there, we probably had five or six cases. Uh, whereas you know, in North America, I would imagine in a decade you might not see any, possibly one, but. Um, easily there would be major centers in the U.S. that wouldn't see a case in, in over a decade. Um, however, it, it, it does have a, a classic appearance, so I, I knew, knew what that was, even though it's fairly rare. Uh, the thing that we didn't know, though, was that uh, Dumano, Dumano also had a, uh, an arachnoid cyst, uh, which the combination of the two made the treatment somewhat more uh, difficult. and. Uh, so this was certainly a case that required the, the collaboration between neurosurgery and craniofacial plastic surgery. And uh, Ed Smith was my neurosurgical colleague, and so he was responsible for uh, managing that cyst, which was 
technically also quite quite difficult. Um, and you know, Dumanel's done wonderfully since that time. An encephalocele is actually a defect in the bone of the calvarium. So the calvarium is the bone that protects your brain. Uh, so there's a defect in the calvarium and during development what ends up happening is that part of the brain and part of the covering of the brain actually protrudes through that defect. Uh, so in, in Dumanel's case, he had a defect essentially between his eyes. So he had a herniation of brain and the covering around the brain that was coming through uh, essentially the top of his nose. And it can occur anywhere, so there are, you can have encephalocele's in different parts of the brain. Uh, but this is one location that uh, there are different varieties in this particular location. Uh, between the eyes, um, they can exit at the top of the nose or into the nose or actually uh, laterally uh, into, the, into the orbits. The encephalocele itself uh, is not necessarily, so people can live with these, although obviously they look very unusual. Um, however, sometimes you know, it's not unheard of to have infections in these encephalocele, which can cause encephalitis or a brain infection. So uh, it is certainly something that uh, requires correction if, if you do know that someone has this. The arachnoid cyst, uh, is also something that does require correction because they enlarge and can actually at some point cause pressure on the brain which can be life-threatening. Mm. So I think it was fortuitous in, in this particular case because uh, although it's possible that he could have lived for quite some time with the encephalocele, the arachnoid cyst is something that actually could, could have given him more difficulty later on.